Innes, Riley, and McGarvey, next on Rogers Cable 10. Usually, Hugh and I talk about politics or things that matter in the world, but every now and again, our producer, Don Adams, gives us a chance to just tee off on things that bug us. What's bugging you this week, Hugh? Well, well let's start off, Bud, with the Blue Jays' uh, favorite Toronto topic. The team hasn't been doing so well this year, and I spotted this picture in the star, and I think we may have part of the problem right there. This is why they're trailing the Boston Red Sox. Too much mutual bump padding is going on. <laughs> now, these people probably live in California where that's fine, whatever you do. It, it does strike me also, Bud, that uh, professional athletes are so super macho that it's okay if they hold hands, which they do on the football field, which I think is really hilarious, and, and patting bums is okay because their macho rating is unquestioned. If you and I held hands in the parking lot at Rogers here, I think we'd be in or trouble. Or if we did this in the parking or lot. Or if we did this, we, right. Even, yeah, if, we, even, even after a great show we shake hands once in a while <laughs> not, not this stuff oh come on <laughs> Cliff. And also, you can be sent to jail for killing a pigeon on the field in Toronto, and and this is okay, and, and, and that's and, and this they not. dare to do. Oh, listen, a whole investigation after the season's over. I think we should let the bump padding go on while they're still in the race. Well, I, I want to know, following your theory that this is the reason, I want I want to know that the Boston uh, players are not doing the same kind of thing in, in their stadium. I hope not. We should check the Boston papers for some pictures. I think yeah. we're onto a big problem. Cocaine, put that aside. Where hey, this is it. This is this is this is the <laughs> real right. problem. That's Okay. Right. You remember a few weeks ago I did a, a complaint about the, the number of raisins in the butter tarts? A classic. Remember? A classic yeah, a little is wee, what all they, I can yeah, say. It says on the box, a spoonful of raisins in every tart. But then when you actually take the raisins out and, and put them in a spoon, you find that the spoon has to be one of those little wee tiny spoons, right? The firm well, went out of business. What, what can okay. we say? Well, I'm on a right. raisin kick here. And I've, I was interested in the commercial that you see on television. And in, and in fact, this advertisement on the, on the box of Raisin Bran that shows scoops, two scoops of raisins in every box. You know the lumberjack who comes down off the Definitely. tree to the catering truck? And they, there are two scoops of raisins in his bowl of cereal. Well, these on the box are very suspicious. Look how shallow those scoops are. It is hard Wide to tell. Shallow. That's right. right. OK? Yes. So I think, wait a minute, they're pulling a fast one here. So what I did was I dumped out this box of Raisin Bran. Can I move that now? I'll move this out of the way. Box of Raisin Bran into a tray, and my kids and I came around the table, and we took the raisins out of the box. Now, look at that. Oh, I mean, this incredible. is that. Even a that yeah, it that's, is that's incredible. I was shocked. My kids were shocked. Battle Creek, that, Michigan, all is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> but look at these that's raisins. Fantastic. Listen, uh, it'll be better if I dump them out here, so so you can actually see them without this dark. Uh, two dark full bowl. scoops. No it question. It is two full yeah. scoops, yeah. and I'll show you yeah. the scoops. Three quarter. Here it is. Yeah. That's yeah. three quarters yeah, of a it. cup. They've done it. Each. Right. Two of it's these. Fantastic. Now, uh, do you want me to do it? I I can give you. I can give you those there. That's one. We're and going to cook, well, I, la I, cook I, later, folks. Act <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, I could pour this all back in here, but there are too many raisins. Now, I want you to take one of these raisins and feel that. Rub it between your fingers. What, what's what do you on notice it? in that? It's, there's salt on it. No there's, salt. There's some stuff on it. Sugar. Sugar? Really? Oh, sugar. Great. Oh. Lots of sugar. Our mm. hands were so sticky by the time we got finished. Nature with sugar this. not enough for Dr. That's Kellogg. right. In fact, oh, I checked the ingredients awful. on this, and it does, in fact, say raisins are the second. There's first of all, there's wheat, yeah, uh, or wheat flour actually, right. and that the second ingredient is raisins or are raisins brackets coated with sugar bracket. Well, I, th so I think we're telling the truth. Yeah. Kellogg's, Tell Battle it, Creek, Michigan, you're okay in our books. Yeah, all is forgiven. You can stay Ex around, Rogers. Except they can take the sugar off of take these. Take the sugar off. Well, you have to give a small demerit point for the sugar. We really do, bud. Yeah, I agree. But, and it's a lot more expensive, and now you see why, because of all these reasons. It, it is more, much more expensive, actually, but that's that justified. That's okay. Good work. Okay, I don't know what I'm going to attack next. There must be a chocolate <laughs> bar out there. Now, the real problem now, my kids insist that I get these all back in the box. I have no idea how I'm going to... You know how and long it took And distributed properly through distribute. the... distributed. That's the that's whole key to it. Want a whole bowl like, of raisins. Yeah, I could just dump took. these back in, and so some kid is going to have milk on this for breakfast and, and love it and want it all the time. Dad, when are you going to do another experiment? <laughs> Sugar raisins. Maybe it's a new cereal we now, just invented. Now, my, my son, Ryan, who was uh, uh, very instrumental 
he spent the, the, the longest amount of time pulling these raisins out and being very picky about how he got them out and making sure that the, the raisin bran that went back in here had no raisins in it. He says, uh, well, well, Dad, you know, there's, there's too much sugar on this. So credits uh, to, uh, to my son. He also credits says, hey, Dad, you can't go on television because they, they, the, the box of raisin bran passed the test. And I said, but that's research. You that's have right. to go with the truth. And the truth is that Kellogg's does have two scoops of raisins in every box. Enough said. Well, on once, to the next complaint, one, Once a year, we should mention something we like, I think. Okay. So raisin bran, that's okay. Well, but I got this in both my papers this week. Did you get that? You must have. Revision, Revision of Federal of Electoral Boundaries in Ontario. Proposals of the Commission. That's no, right. I didn't see that. Well, nobody is going to read all that stuff, so I have read through it, and I thought on Rogers as our usual public service, we'd give a summary of it. And what it says, in fact, is that everybody from Kennedy Road to Newfoundland will no longer have a vote in federal elections. No. That's the first piece of news. You do live, oh, that, but that's too bad. Anyway, <laughs> on the other side, <laughs> no, Kennedy, no, we each get two votes in federal elections, and Indians will actually get a negative vote. If they vote Tory, then the NDP will get a vote, and, that, and that's sort of strange. So there are a lot of changes in here, folks, that you should well, be aware of. You have to explain yourself, Hugh. What are you, what are you talking about? Someone here it's, has no votes. That's right, sure. Well, well, anybody east of Kennedy Road doesn't have very many good ideas, and, and everybody west of Kennedy Road has lots of good ideas, so uh, we're redistributing the votes, and I think that's excellent. It's uh, the end of democracy, bud. Let's well, I'm it. glad you're reading your mail, Hugh. What else have you got? What else have we got? Well, this is uh, a most interesting story. Having lived with, uh, you know, when, I, when we had kids, I thought, we'll never have Barbie dolls around our house. Well, we still have about 17 Barbie dolls bought at uh, $20 each with uh, 500 wardrobes for each one. This is the latest uh, Mattel attack on the human mind. This is Mrs. Hart. Now, they make sh clear that this is not Ken and Barbie who've gotten married and gotten pregnant. This is a completely new doll, and you can see that this doll does, in fact, look pregnant. Now, with the dolls come it's the baby, but they don't explain how the baby comes out of mother. I think if they did explain to little girls how the baby comes out of mother, that would be the end of the human race. So I think, <laughs> I think they, would, they would swear <laughs> off of that, that would forever. Be it. Yeah. That's right. Remember your wife screaming, never again will I be here? Well, is right. the baby actually in there? Well, the baby is in the kit somewhere. And, and the baby, you sort of open the box, and there's the baby sort of arrived. Mattel has gotten rid of all that messy blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> that you and I are familiar the, with. The those labor, the, uh, the Lamas, and, and all of that stuff. Is, that's right. That's yeah. right. I, I don't understand why Barbie couldn't have gotten pregnant, but they seem to go to very stress the point uh, very strongly that this is not Barbie and Ken. These are two new dolls. Uh, she is pregnant and, and the I'm, baby. I, wait a minute. Don't put it away no. so fast. I'm right. fascinated by that hairdo. That is a wild hairdo. Well, it's, Where did all that hair come that from? Isn't that interesting? It does look the sort of 1950s uh, long hair and an almost beehive style. That is a lot of hair. And we well know, bud, that when you have babies, your hair falls out. I wonder if, that, I wonder if <laughs> yours that's are, something. Yours or hers. <laughs> Mine fell out. I wonder if that's something they built into this, that her hair begins to fall out as she has the baby. Yeah, I, I hope the guy has a job. Yeah. <laughs> he's not one of the he unemployed. He certainly doesn't look as if he has a job. I, he's a bum, a bum, I <laughs> About the man. Okay, here's uh, now this is in the nature of the complaint. I can't say that the uh, raisins and raisin brands was a, a complaint. In fact, there's a little bit of consumer research. This is consumer research that, that comes with a complaint. Now, you are familiar with these things that you, you get, Hugh, when, uh, when you use a public washroom. Yes. Or a washroom in, in Ryerson. I suppose they have these, these things here. They do. Now, there yes. are several varieties of these. There's one that's a cloth towel right. that is always dirty and always at the end when I arrive. I don't know if that ever How quickly we get into the washroom in this show. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> go, go ahead. Yeah, well, we spend, <laughs> we, we, we spend an eighth of our live, <laughs> we, lives we, in we there. Do. They, we do. There's anyway, you use this when your hands are sopping wet, right? Right. That's because you want to take this out of the container yes. and dry your hands with it. Right. Okay. Experiment. <laughs> number two for the program. Excellent. What happens is that. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, that's a and, perfect and by the time, By the time, because your hands are wet, this stuff, and now it's, my fingers are getting a little dry, you end up with only half a piece by the time you manage to get it out of the, uh, out of the and, container. And, and this is real cheap paper, isn't it, really? I mean, well, this is yeah, this isn't, stuff. this isn't the very yeah. best. No, this isn't no, your, this is your, not, your bounty. No, your no, quicker this is not your bounty. Upper. No, it isn't at all. Isn't that awful? Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. So, Anyway, you get, you get about a half a sheet because your hands are wet and it is just going to rip the daylights out of it. The other kind of, uh, 
of utensil that you find in these public washrooms is that magical blower, which blows the hands dry, and you have to do this with it. And it's, it's got a sort of a short elephant's uh, trunk nozzle right. on it, right? right? And you can tip yeah. it up, and you can, you can wash your hair, I guess, <laughs> in these public <laughs> washrooms, and then That's dry right. it on this thing, That's I suppose. Right. Right. The problem is you have to touch that wet knob. After somebody has already used it, there's that wet, slimy, soapy, sometimes AIDS soapy, laden. AIDS laden. You don't want to touch it. <laughs> That's right. So I, th there are a lot of people going around with wet elbows as a result of that. And they get those shirts suits washed regularly. Sir. I don't have the answer for all of this, other than dispensers that are much more user friendly. Y very that's good. That's what I want. Yes, yes, that's what you want. I, I'm always unhappy, bud, too, with the roller towel because it's always broken and you've got just a mass of green grunge to do your hands <laughs> on. It just looks so awful. Yeah. Or you pull it. And, and it only comes down so far. There's not enough. You have, actually almost have to stick your hands right, right up in the machine to do it. <laughs> a little yeah. bit up there toward right. the machine. Right. And exactly. then you can't seem to get the rest of it down. Yeah. Well, t speaking of washrooms, as we, <laughs> as we just were, I was in uh, Syracuse uh, last April, and I went to the Syracuse airport into the washroom. And in the washroom, there was a table where fathers could change babies' diapers. I'm for that. This is a revelation to me. Well, now there's an article in the Globe that uh, McDonald's are putting them in. I was in the city hall washroom. I spend a lot of time in washrooms as a middle-aged well, man. Well, that's what I had suggested. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think this is a fantastic idea, but what a revelation. If you'd said to people 50 years ago there'd be tables where men could change babies' diapers in men's washrooms, the times they are a-changing, bud. No, no question about it. Well, did you ever, you changed the babies. I changed the you? babies uh, constantly. I haven't yet changed my granddaughter because I haven't had a chance, you know, with three girls in the house. <laughs> I have to, I'm, I, I'm in line. I should get to change her about the time she leaves you, diapers. Yeah, you get, you get a ticket at the, but, the, but, at the nursery door. Yeah, you know, by the time she's 17, I'll be ready to change your diapers, yeah. although they'll, they'll allow me. But that strikes me as an incredible change in our society, you know, when you talk about nothing no, changes. I don't well, know. Is that going to encourage the, the fathers to take the, uh, the babies to the washroom to do it? What will, it, will it be the wife or the mother saying to the father, your turn to change the baby, I'm going to eat my, uh, my Big Mac, uh, take off? What, what, I, what I suspect is that already fathers are changing diapers a mile a minute, and this is to accommodate what's going on already. I mean, I really think that that's happening. When you watch couples in McDonald's with a baby, I notice more and more that the father is sharing half the burden. He's holding the kid half the time or more than half the time. Uh, not doing enough of that, but that's a tremendous change. I, I never mind a change in the baby's diapers no, uh, did myself, I. and no. I, I can't understand men who, who find that uh, such a terrible chore. Yeah, that's right. And they should check with Lloyd Mosby about macho-ness. And, I mean, it, it's, it's so crazy because in, in, a, in a real sense, but that's how you get to know them by being with them and doing things with it's them. It's part of the bonding process, and I think, I think it's necessary yeah. for fathers yeah. to, uh, yeah. to keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay, that's this week. Stay tuned now. Here's Pete McGarvey.